Rajan Angolan has emerged as one of the world's best midfielders, and he's perhaps the blueprint of what a dominant central midfielder needs to be. Extremely tough in the tackle, yet with just as much ability on the ball as without it, a pass that any midfield maestro would be proud of, and a shot that any striker would be envious of. Hey guys, my name is Adrian from Rabona TV, and today we're taking a closer look at Rajan Angolan's upbringing and how he got to where he is today. But before we get going, make sure you hit that subscribe button if you want more player bios like this, in-depth news and statistics videos, as well as transfers every Friday, and much, much more. Rajan Angolan was born on May 4th, may the 4th be with you, 1988 in Antwerp, Belgium. His mother, Lizzie Bogertz, was Flemish, while his father, Marianus Nangolan, is Indonesian. Radja has a twin sister named Rihanna, who is also a footballer. In fact, they both started playing football for Tubansia Borkhout at the age of five. It was also around this time that their father, Marianus, abandoned the family, leaving them with nothing and leaving Radja's mother to look after him, his twin sister, and his three half-brothers. With a lot of kids and a lot of debt, Radja's mother worked long hours to support her children. With no father figure and Radja's mother out working most of the time, Radja spent most of his time in the streets of the rough Antwerp neighborhood of Linkerover. However, a constant in his life was always football, and at the age of 10, he made the move to Germinal Beerschot. He stayed with Beerschot from 2000 to 2005, before Swiss scout Alessandro Beltrami noticed the young pit bull and convinced him to make the move to the Serie B squad Piacenza. Radja wouldn't make his senior debut with Piacenza until the 28th of May 2006 in a defeat to Arezzo. In the following season, Nangolan was a constant in the Piacenza lineup. The 2009-2010 season would be a success for him, though a very hard one also. His mother Lizzie had a very aggressive form of cancer that they only discovered three months before her passing. Living in a ton of pain and with no real chance of recovery, his mother decided to have herself euthanized. In tribute to his mother, among his many other tattoos, he had two giant angel wings tattooed on his back, with both her date of birth and date of passing. Like we've heard in our other bios on Dybala and Mkhitaryan, the loss of a parent would only drive Nangolan to become all that he could be in football, and his tattoos never let him forget where he came from, or who he is. Speaking of where he came from, perhaps some of the toughness of his playing style is directly correlated with the surroundings he grew up in. He lived in one of many giant apartment blocks that surrounded a small park in Linkerover, Antwerp, where Raggi learned to play in a concrete, boxed-in pitch where the tackles flew in so hard that it wouldn't be a surprise to see players flying over the fences. His tough style and ability to break up attacks has become one of the hallmarks of his game. While his proficiency to thread unthinkable passes between defenders was undoubtedly developed while playing on the claustrophobic pitch in Linkerover. In the same year as his mother's passing, Raggio was loaned to Cagliari with the option to buy him outright. He made his Serie A debut for Cagliari on February 7th, 2010 against Inter Milan. From there, he made seven straight appearances, including getting his first Serie A red card. However, Cagliari clearly liked what they saw in him as they purchased 50% of his rights from Piacenza as part of a co-ownership deal. If you aren't familiar with this, co-ownership is not the same as third-party ownership of a player's rights. With third-party ownership, the other ownership entity isn't a football club and is usually a sports management company. With co-ownership, it's as simple as it sounds. Two teams have an agreed upon percentage of rights to the player. Often, when you hear of sell-on fees and transfers, this is due to co-ownership of a certain percentage of the player's rights by a former club. Just so you know, and you'll want to keep that in mind for later as well. In the following season, with the absence of Daniele Conti, Raggi started most games for the Sardinia club, and he scored his first Serie A goal with a tidy volley on Halloween of 2010 against Bologna. Continuing this great form throughout the first half of the season, Cagliari decided it was time to buy the other 50% of Raggi and Angolan's rights from Piacenza at the end of the January 2011 transfer window. In total for Cagliari, he played 137 matches and scored 7 goals, until he was loaned to AS Roma in January of 2014. In fact, Roma had to pay 3 million euros to take him on loan, with an option to buy a 50% stake in his rights in a co-ownership deal, again, at the end of the season. These Italians really like co-ownership deals, don't they? Nangolan had an instant impact on the capital city side, helping them pass both Sampdoria and Juventus in the Coppa Italia. And he scored his first goal for Roma in the Serie A against Bologna, yet again, in a 1-0 win on February 22, 2014. It was also in 2014 where he scored his first goal for Belgium's Red Devils, coming in a friendly draw against Côte d'Ivoire. Unfortunately, he wasn't selected for the 2014 World Cup, but his time would come. 
Back in Rome, with the club so impressed with the tenacity he brought to the pitch, coupled with a delicate touch, an eye for a pass, and the ability to smash a goal in once in a while, Roma decided that he was a worthy investment. That summer, he signed a permanent deal with Roma who acquired his rights for just 9 million euros. Seems like peanuts given his stature now, no? In the three following seasons with Roma, he would play in 134 matches and score 26 goals, 15 of which were in the 2016-2017 season. So you can see why so many clubs are fighting for his signature now. But back to his international career for a moment. Radja played in almost every single qualifier for the Euro 2016 championships, and he was also one of Belgium's top players in the tournament itself. He scored the winning goal against Sweden at the Stade de Nice, and scored arguably the goal of the tournament against Wales, though his efforts were all for naught as they bowed out 3-1 against the almost Cinderella story nation. Teams know what they are going to get out of Nangolan. A player who gives everything for his team is as tough as the Antwerp streets he grew up in while still being able to pass with the best central midfielders in the world and has a developing eye for goal. I hope that you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure you hit that subscribe button, give it a like and drop a comment on which player you would like me to see covered next in a player or manager bio. Once again, my name is Adrian, this is Rabona TV and I hope to see you in the next video. Peace.